Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Nine Vibes. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the depths of cosmic time. A lot of people uh, kind of tell me that time is an illusion, that time doesn't actually exist, that we made up time. And what I'd like to do is I would like to show you an alignment that just might make you question that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So what you can see right here is you can see that I have a cosmic clock, and I'm going to show you how all of this flows together. None of it is arbitrary, none of it is made up, and it follows the exact same pattern to show you where time came from. All right, so as you can see right here, you have a grid, and this is what I call basically my time clock. This can run by itself, it could run automatically, it can run with the cosmos, uh, it just keeps going. And it started originally with the Fibonacci, which is what we're going to talk about. But as you can see right here, we've got a 12 clock count right here, we've got a Fibonacci 5 and 0. We've got a Lucas number clock. We have the last digits um, of the Lucas number. We have Fibonacci last digit repeat pattern. And then we have Lucas on the outside. Okay, so it all connects together. And I'm going to show you how. So let's talk about Fibonacci. What is the Fibonacci sequence? Well, the Fibonacci sequence is a pattern of numbers that is revealed when you start with two numbers like 1, 1 or 0, 1 and keep adding to them. So 1 plus 1 is 2 and 2 plus 1 is 3 and 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8 and it keeps going on forever. But as you can see here, what we have actually done is this right here is a 60 digit repeat pattern and it comes from taking the last digit of Fibonacci. So basically as it would continue, let's say that eight plus five is 13, we wouldn't take 13, we would take the last digit, which would be a three. So if you continue doing this, what you actually notice is that the Fibonacci sequence goes on forever. It never stops, it just keeps going. And if you really wanna get into the understanding of time, get into the Fibonacci sequence because the moment that zero plus one created one is the moment that time started and it has been going on forever, it never stops. And so that would be kind of impossible for us to find out where we are in time. So instead what we have done is we found patterns within the Fibonacci sequence. One of the very first patterns that we have found is the last digit of the Fibonacci sequence creates a 60 digit repeat pattern. So in other words, it keeps going and going as big as it gets, but if you take the last digit every 60 digits, it is going to have a very specific number and then it is going to restart all over again. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So if we were to go ahead and start here, so as you can see, I just reversed it here. One, one, two, three, five, eight, three, one, four, five. And it goes all the way around 60 digits. It is going to end with uh, the one, and then it is gonna start all over again, okay? So no matter how big the Fibonacci sequence gets, it's going to end up reducing to a 60 digit repeat pattern that goes on forever. So that's one of the first things that we can look at where we can actually pull out a pattern from this infinite number that just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Okay. Now, if we take that pattern and highlight every fifth number, we actually only get a five or a zero, which is pretty astounding in the fact that this is a number that goes on forever, has a 60 digit repeat pattern, but just so happens that if you align it on a circle and you end up with uh, 60 digits going around, which basically they're separated by six degrees. But if you end up having it uh, go around, what you will actually see is that zero hits at the south the west, the north, and the east. There are no other zeros that are found in this 60-digit repeat pattern except for north, south, east, and west, which are basically the compasses of your clock, okay? But that alone isn't even the most astounding thing. The next thing you will see is that every fifth number is also a five or a zero. So in other words, we start with the zero and we move five places. One, two, three, four, five. Well, that's a five. And then we move again and you will see one, two, three, four, five, and that's a five. And if we continue doing this, it'll either be a zero or a five. And there are no other zero or fives that are held within this 60 digit repeat pattern. That's astonishing because what that actually does is it creates the 12 hours on a clock. Every single point that it hits was exactly where one of our hours would be on a clock. Okay. But that isn't just the alignment with that, because what you will actually learn is that 12 hours was designed because of our 60 based math system that we found and discovered ages ago. Every hour is 60 minutes and every minute is 60 seconds. So 60 times 60 times 12 gives you 43,200. There are 86,400 seconds in a day. And so that means that every 12 hours is exactly 43,200 seconds. Okay. Again, it's not arbitrary. It's very much divinely designed. Okay, so if we go back and we look at this, we see that these fives and these zeros hit exactly where a clock would be. So if this was 12 o'clock, this would be one o'clock, and this would be two o'clock, this would be three o'clock, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, right back at 12. And then you have the zeros, north, 
right? East, south, and west. Okay, so that's just from the Fibonacci sequence. But what you're actually going to notice is there is a pattern inside of this pattern. All right, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. And also, before I get into that, if you were to actually reduce the Fibonacci sequence into digital roots, instead of taking the last digit, you end up with exactly 12. You end up with 12. And then if you had continued on to the next 12, you could align them on top of each other and they would end up being 999 across the board. All right. So there's some really interesting stuff with that. But we also have something that is called the Lucas sequence. Now, the Lucas sequence is basically if you were to start with two and then go to one. Instead of starting with one, one, we're starting with two and going to one. And if you continue doing that, you would have this pattern that is two, one, three, four, seven, one, right? So what you're actually seeing here is two, one, three, four, seven, 11, 18, 29, 47, 76, 123, 199, 322, 521, and 843. And it'll can keep growing and growing just like the Fibonacci. But when you take the last digit of it, you get another pattern, two, one. One, three, four, seven. So we'll take the last digit one and the last digit eight and the last digit nine and the last digit seven, last digit six, last digit three, and then nine and then two and then one and then three. And so you'll notice that every 12 is actually a repeat pattern. So if we look here at the Fibonacci that we were looking at, what we will see is we will see that around these zeros and these fives are the Lucas pattern, which is astonishing because of the fact that if you take one plus one, will you get two? If you take Three plus eight, you'll end up with, right? Everybody knows eight, nine, 10, 11. So you've got one, which is going to be the last digit. The same thing for four plus nine, which is going to end up being 13. The last digit is going to be three. Seven and seven is 14. Last digit is going to be four. So what you're seeing before your eyes is that around each of these fives and these zeros is holding the place of the Lucas sequence. You go all the way around and it'll hit two and it'll start over again. Now, that is absolutely amazing because of the fact that technically the Lucas sequence is something that shouldn't be directly connected to the Fibonacci in any way, shape, or form, except for that it follows the same pattern. All right, so let's continue going. So as we can see, we have our Lucas sequence, which we talked about, and then we can see this pattern. Okay, so again, I tried to highlight so you can see that this would have been where the fives and the zeros are, and as you can see, you have the Lucas pattern. But what is so amazing about the Lucas pattern is that if the Lucas pattern follows all the way around, right? So two plus one is three and one plus three is four and four plus three is seven and seven plus four, all right? Going to keep going all the way around is going to reveal not only the Fibonacci because that's what it's doing when it follows around, but the Lucas pattern is inside of the Lucas pattern. So as you can see here, two, one, three, four, seven, one, eight, six, uh, sorry, eight, nine, seven, six, three, nine. So the Lucas pattern is not only its own pattern, but the Lucas pattern is found inside of its own pattern, which is just absolutely amazing. But it gets even better than that, okay? Because then we have the Lucas pattern again. So if for whatever reason, if you take the two numbers around the fives and the zeros, which I showed you, you see the Lucas patterns. But if you continue going, right? So basically what this is, is it's the Fibonacci, as I was showing you, but it's actually filled in, instead of actually having the zeros and the fives, you have the number filled in, which creates this full complete picture. And if you wanna see that separate, what I can do is show you this, okay? So for instance, here are the zeros and here are the fives all the way around. And this right here is the Lucas pattern. So as you can see around these is going to be the Lucas number. And if I were to follow the Lucas pattern all the way around, it is going to reveal to me exactly 12 points right? That are going to go all the way around a 60 digit pattern. Because if you end up taking that 12 and you um, multiply it by five, you end up with the 60. So it's fascinating that it's the fives, right? That are going to be replacing these numbers and five times 12 is going to be 60. So you can have a 60 digit repeat Fibonacci pattern and a 60 digit repeat Lucas sequence just by taking it by five cycles, which is amazing when you look at the procession of the equinox, because I'm a big believer in the fact that if we had nine days a week, we would have 36 days a month. And if we had 36 days a month and we had 12 months, we would have 432 days a year. And if we had 432 days a year and we had five cycles, which is the importance of these fives all the way around and the importance of the Lucas with the five. If we had five cycles, we would have 2,160 days per cycle. And since we have 12 zodiacs, 2,160 times 12 is 25,920. It's a perfect alignment with the procession of the equinox. Okay, so this right here is not arbitrary. 
it follows a very specific pattern. And when it is complete, it looks like this. Okay. So as you can see right here, you have the 12 uh, hours on the clock. You then have the zeros and the fives that are located around where the exact Lucas numbers are following around in their 60 digit pattern. Because remember, five times 12 is going to give you 60, which is also going to lead you towards the dodecahedron if you really want to study that. But as you can see, you've got that pattern that is going around. And then on these specific points of the Lucas sequence inside of the Lucas sequence, you have the fives and the zeros on the outside. And the fives and the zeros directly connect to the 60 digit repeat pattern of the Fibonacci, which then leads you to another Lucas sequence on the outside of hitting these points. This is a clock. This whole entire process is a clock because if you were to have basically something right here that was keeping track of the time, this right here would end up being your seconds. And as the moment that it would hit this point right here, then it would be one second on this clock. And then these right here would end up being minutes. And so once you hit the seconds, then you would have one minute. And then this would move slowly following this clock right here. It's absolutely amazing, but that's not even as far as you can go with this because you can actually create this into a Zodiac cosmic clock. Basically, what you would do is you would see that this right here is a representation of 18 full days. And the reason we're going to choose 18 full days is because of the fact that each one of these numbers, right? So if we look at the Fibonacci, each one of these numbers is going to be 432 minutes. So if you have 432 minutes and you go all the way around, you would have 25,920 minutes in 18 days. Okay. So as you can see here, did you know that every 18 days is 25,920 minutes? That means that every number is 432 minutes. Every fifth number would be a total of 2,160, which is what I was telling you guys. And so if that's the case, then it means that it's 1.5 days. Every five or zero is a zodiac, which is 1.5 days. And 1.5 times your 12 zodiacs gives you 18 total days. So you can keep track of this not only as your own personal guide for your zodiacs, you could keep track of this as your own personal cosmic clock, but you could also keep track of this as an overall understanding of putting it all together and following both Zodiac as well in your day, as well as a cosmic 18 day cycle that keeps repeating. Because if it was actually 18 days, 18 plus 18 is 36. So this is a halfway point between every single month that you would have. All right. It's absolutely amazing. And I'm working on getting this running itself so that it can be a cosmic clock so that we can align these things, right? Your zodiac in your day plays a huge role. Energy moves whether or not you're observing it or not observing it. And between certain two hours of your day is one specific zodiac. And so if you can align this inside of itself, you would be able to align with not only the zodiac energy that is around you, but also the time energy that is around you because time is not arbitrary. Time started long before we were here and it will exist long after you are observing this life. It's the understanding that something started at the very beginning and that was a zero, which is basically the holder of everything. Whatever it is that you want to call it, God, the source or anything, it is the holder of everything. And then you have the one, the one that came next, the aspect of the zero. And once you add the one, then it duplicated into the one and now you have the two. And that's how this whole entire process started. And at the very beginning when it started, it has been running ever since. Whether you can see it or not see it, time exists. And you exist within time. And so I think it's just time, ironically, that we start getting aligned with time. Get your nine vibes aligned.